Hello, I'm back. Once again, I'm talking about the Plains Indians. Today I'm talking about Washiki. Uh, he was a Shoshone chief. And, um, yeah, Washiki was a Shoshone chief in the Plains. And, um, he died in 1804. No, he was born in 1804. He died in 1900. Um, he was another great warrior. The time now. It's 12.50 a.m. Wednesday. And um, the Indians used to use these not for killing. These was used for cutting bush and stuff like that. When Europeans came here, they had no other choice but to use them for weapons because they was killing them. And declare war on them, and um, oh, he was a great uh person for his to thrive to keep everything in order. He wanted to always keep the peace, and they buried him with honors, even though they didn't like him, and so like that. That's my mother descended from them. My mother was a Shawnee Indian, and I mean she really was a Shawnee. My mother spoke her native language. Uh, she, my mother lived in Iowa, and she lived in Wyoming. Garrison, Wyoming, and stuff like that. And um, my mother also was a, used to be a wrestler in the 1940s. She was a karate expert. She was my first karate instructor. She was born in August the 10th, 1919. My grandmother was Shoshone. We had 20 children. My mother was the oldest out of Ten boys and ten girls, all of them served in the military. And uh, I talk about my next video. And um, in Shoshone, if a person, if a native called you Yagachi, that means crier. That's a very powerful name. If you um, don't cry and people be teasing you, teaching Yagachi, Yagachi, you never cry. That make the name powerful. And uh, Washiki, his name was powerful too. So I'm just trying to shed light on on that. And I hope people like what I say. I I have to get you know um he was born in uh 1804, uh Washiki. And he died and um I was gotta make sure I get these things right. Um Yeah, he was born, yep, I got it right, 1804, he died 1900, so he was a great man too, and um, my mother always told me that we related to him, and so, yeah. and I'm learning my language, because you don't have your language, lost so I have some of it but I'm gonna learn more and stuff like that until I speak it fluently. My wife speaks fluently Cherokee now and stuff. And people that do all this talking they mad because they just talk they don't speak languages. Language that they supposed to be people always ask me where's your language? And so I told this guy was insulting me and it's always a person of color. I don't understand that. And I said, well, you supposed to be speaking Swahili. Where's your language at? You just talking English like everybody else. Then he stopped talking to me. But what I'm saying, they done so much stuff to Indian, and the Indians get targeted a lot because everybody trying to claim to be an indigenous person. You indigenous, but you come from another place that's indigenous. And, um, and I'm telling a God's honest truth. My mother told me that story about how I was born. Unless you come from someplace else, 
because my mother had a blue light coming from inside her womb, and the doctor seen that and was 12 other children born just like that, that same day I was uh, born. And that's why, like, the doctors today said I have unusual thick skin. Brooklyn, they were shooting at this guy, and a bullet went right by my head and bounced off. It burnt. Now, you know something that ain't, ain't right, because that pulls a cut in the skin, and the bullet, you ever seen bullets, when they hit the ground, they make sparks off the ground, getting shot at. That's what happened to me, and then when they go try to take my blood, they have a hard time finding my veins. But they said my my veins is there, but they like almost invisible. So I know the, the nurse stuck me three times with a needle and she could not find my veins. And, and I even drank four cups of water and they still couldn't find it. And and they actually put the needle in my arm to, like, to, to, for the intravenous. The needle bent. He said, you have an extra cold and thick skin like a bear. That's why it takes some time more than one bullet to kill a bear. So he said, the creator made you like that to protect yourself. And people don't even know why they different colors. Do different colors to protect yourself. Like a Middle Eastern person, he may be fair-skinned, but where he come from, the desert. And if he was, if the enemy was fighting him, he can lay down butt naked in the sand. You won't know he's there. He's, he's, he blends right in with the, the de desert um, sand. But that's, you know, the, but that's what it is him. But like in Africa, you might find some Africans very dark. That's to protect him from from other predators or other tribes. He can get up against it because in Africa, they got the black rocks. Like he can get right up next to a, a bunch of black rocks and be standing there. You won't even know he's there until you come by. That's the same thing about Native Americans. They did the camouflage at the whisk, like Washi, Chief Wash, Wash, Washi, I think it was. They was also, for Lewis, they also um, helped Shakwazia. Um, she should join. They all, she helped them, uh, Lewis and Clark, in this venture. But they wasn't nice either. I'm going to tell you about that in another segment. So I'm just letting people know about these things and, you know, stop bashing natives because natives. Did a lot of stuff too, and um, these is haters. It's like a person might rap better than another person. He gonna get a lot of haters, and a lot of people is haters. I have been cussed out. I haven't done nothing to nobody. I haven't got cussed out. African American people and other uh, people that come in this country, because they don't like you because you represent your culture and stuff like that. You don't see nothing to represent where they come from or stuff like that. And that's why I told people, um, natives was here versus living proof of that. And um, a lot of Indians do not look like the way people think they look. Indians do not look like Chinese people. I'm not taking nothing from nobody, but I know who I am, and I know who I'm, I'm descended from. I even met some of my mother's family, Shoshone, on that side of family. I had a book, and my wife looked in the book. This the shorty lady was in the book. The picture like we're taking it. That lady looked exactly like my mother. I know that was my mother's relative. It was a book I had. Um, the books I was trying to put them in school. Uh, I'm gonna try to find them again because the place I used to get all the books from, they went out of business. Called Gray Isle. They used to be in Queens for fifty something years. Then they moved to Jersey and stuff like that. And stay down there until they went out of business. Uh, Elmhurst, New Jersey. Uh, I think it's past Atlantic City. They moved down there. I even went down there. They wanted me to transfer. Good thing I did to transfer to uh, New Jersey. They were going to find me an apartment. I was real good at uh, when I worked there, like making, we just had to uh, make belts and stuff for the Boy Scout. I used to do about 30 boxes a day, fill them up, you know, just to have us like, Camera and bat out the, the, the prints of the, the belt, put them in the box, and another person come and take them away. So, more on that some other time. Indians had to protect itself, and, and when they fought this uh, Shoshone, um, 
he had to use something for a weapon because Europeans, the ones started the scalpers, so Indians never scalped nobody. Like I said, used for hunting, and cutting down bush where they can walk through and make a path. They used it for cutting wood and stuff like that. When the white people came and they saw what they did, so the Indians would scalp them back and fought back. Imagine getting hit with one of these and right in the face. I know that would hurt, but they didn't have no choice. Oh, that's enough on that one. And um, uh, I hope everybody have a good night. And um, I'll talk to y'all later. Donna Dive Wado. Y'all later.